All right, so it's about oh, maybe two weeks later or so, and this arrived today, and uh, we're gonna check it out, see what's going on in here. Okay, so we got gaskets, uh, reed set. Okay, that's cool. Here's my coupler. I would say that looks relatively safe and sound. Can't argue with that. Set on the bench. All right, so I just, um, I unpacked my jet ski engine here and out of an abundance of uh, caution here, I went and did a pressure test. And so pressure tests on a two stroke are pretty simple. Um, basically you need to cover all the holes of, of everything, every exhaust, every intake, every everything, pulse ports, everything. So what I have here is just a piece of plywood, um, OSB that I put um, underneath. You can see I have a layer of duct, duct tape. So I went across and across and across a couple layers. So it kind of like ask, acts like a gasket. And then I took these clamps and clamped it down tight over each of the, um, that would be the uh, exhaust ports. And then the intake side, I took the bolts that hold this retaining flange on and I bolted up the actual um, uh, flange. And then underneath there are my reed valve cages. And those reed valve cages um, have like a little rubber edge. So that's how that seals. And then I have duct tape on the outside and on the inside. So they're kind of like pinched together right here. So that worked pretty good. Then I have my pulse uh, lines right here that come out of those ports. I just shoved a little wire nut in there, no big deal, just to plug it. And then on top, we were getting a little water pass or a little air passing. It was like slipping through, coming out the exhaust port and then going back into the water jacket. So we just capped the water jacket here too. And that's uh, this guy and right here. So there's, there's multiple ways you could do this. But point is you wanna cover all the holes and all the ways that air can escape from this thing. And so what I did is I have my Makuni pop-off tester plumbed in using my compression tester. This is just a, like a regular compression tester with the Schrader valve pulled out. So that feeds back to this um, gauge. And so then I can see how much pressure I'm actually adding to the system. Then um, right now I have a plug in here, but what I had in there was just my air chuck for my um, compressed air. And by using this type of a tool, jam down into that plug hole, I can put a little air into it and watch that gauge and make sure it doesn't go above, you know, 10 or so PSI. So I got this all set up and I went to go do that test. And wouldn't you know, but right here where this um, engine was welded, there's a big fat crack, like from all the way here, all the way down to the bottom here. So um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. It, it runs all the way up to about like right here. It runs all the way down, all the way to the actual seam, which is a huge bummer because it just won't run like that. And it might run for, you know, 90 minutes, but uh, that's a surefire way to have this thing blow up. So I'm glad that I did this pressure test. You know, this is a freshly rebuilt engine because um, you just want to check these things before you put it back in, before you pull all this effort and waste of summer screwing around with this. So that's what I discovered, and uh, we'll just see what happens with this engine and how we can get it going, but that's where we stand right now. And you can see it carrying like right on the edge of my fingernail, there's a big ass crack right there. Pissing air out of it, like not even close to sealed. And so I called back and I was like, hey, you know, I was like, there's a hole in this thing, and they're like, oh, we pressure checked it. Well, hey, listen. Obviously not. Obviously you didn't pressure check this thing because there's just no way, unless this cracked four days later, which I find it hard to believe. Point is, it's screwed. And so um, basically I was like, okay, well, what are we gonna do about it? Cause this is basically more broke than when I sent it there because like right now, I mean, now I can't even, I, had, I can't weld it really now because it's down here to the seam. You know what I mean? It's like actually like split the case. So. Um, basically their offer was to send um, some used cases which that's fine um, however now I got to pay for it which again I you know I didn't really care I mean whatever we can weld it or not weld it it was a hundred dollar difference really so definitely not worth risking it but I was going off of their advice <sighs> you know so anyway um, now 
I said, well, I said, well, what about, you know, are you guys just going to send me those or what, or, you know, whatever. Cause obviously you recommended doing this and obviously it didn't work out, you know, and they're like, well, we still welded it. Well, sure. Yeah. You welded it, but this is worse than what I, I mean, welded what you made a big hole. I could have done that, you know, a big crack. So, um, anyway, just kind of a joke and I don't know how I feel about that just yet, but, um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of eat it and just and now, you know what you're dealing with when you deal with these guys. So, um, anyway, just def definitely do check their work, check it out, make sure everything is legit when you get it back, because, you know, you kind of got to find out the hard way sometimes with these companies, whether they actually know what they're doing or if they actually check over their work or if they just say they do so um, anyway here we are and uh, we're gonna have to get this thing torn apart now I am gonna have to take the end off of here take the um, I'm gonna take these bolts here for the cylinders out um, all eight of them so I can pull the cylinder and both cylinders and the and the head all together I'll pull that off the top um, and expose the pistons and everything so I can try and get this thing swapped so again luck luckily I am me and I'm willing to do this and don't want to miss out on the summer because realistically I should throw it back in a box and send it to them but I don't want to be that guy one and two I want to get this thing going this summer I don't want to waste all summer you know with this engine traveling between New York and South Dakota so anyway it is what it is just that's how things go and uh, we're gonna get this thing fixed up now that we got that whole setback uh, sorted out, I'm gonna basically tear this thing down as quick as I can. Um, obviously, you can see me tear down this engine on one of my other videos, but I don't wanna waste your time here, so let's get this thing rolling. All right, now I guess we can see under the hood here a little bit. We have, uh, looks like maybe a WSM piston, not sure. Uh, there's the part number I'm guessing that's it and then that's a WSM rod right there makes sense same here both standard size and then here's the actual jugs you can see this one's got been broken off and broken off here as well don't think that's too bad of a deal and then down here the head's a little got a couple marks so that's obviously a used head and this side over here has either been redone or who knows what's going on there exactly. But I think this will all work. So um, anyway, I didn't have to undo the head gasket at all. I just left that all intact and undid those these bolts right here. And this whole thing pulls off. So now um, once those cases come in, I'll just get take the um, it's all the bolts from underneath. Take those apart and split this thing. All right, so I took the bottom end of this engine and flipped it over. This is actually the bottom side right here, and I've undone all the bolts. Let's see these right here. Undone all the bolts so that these crank case halves should be um, separated now. So now I'm gonna kind of try and flop this back over and get these pistons to come out while pulling up on this guy. So I don't know how hard it's gonna fight me here. Okay, so slight miscalculation on my part. I thought that I could just take this top off and the pistons would go through there, but actually the pistons don't actually fit down through that hole. Um, they just are too wide to go through there. So I'm gonna pull these little circlips off. There's a little clip right here. And then I'm going to uh, try and drive the center pins out and uh, get these out of here. So I got the crankcase halves apart, and this is the top. It's the top half of the crankcase. And you can see where it was repaired. There was a big ass hole right here. And if you look close, you can see a crack right here, and it goes down, and then it's cracked right here. 
And then if we get way down in there, you can see multiple cracks kind of all in that area right there. <clears throat> and then if we come to the outside, here's a little bit better shot of things. But you can see the crack is like right, right here, you can see. And this isn't like just a hairline crack in the sense that it just is cosmetic. I mean, there's air blowing out of there. Right there. So anyway, one of those deals just didn't work out. So we're gonna get um, some used different cases and get that put on here.